Good morning and welcome on this third Sunday of Lent and the first day of spring. And there's a sweet irony that this is the first Sunday in six months that I've been here and the heating is working and it's almost too warm to need it, but there we are. <laughs> uh, please do be seated for a few notices. Today there will be a baptism service at 12.15, so it's entirely possible that um, that congregation will start arriving while we're still enjoying coffee. Uh, if that happens, please don't run away. Please just make them uh, very welcome uh, as they come in. Um, and it's very good that today we're joined by Lily, who was baptised here seven years ago and has flown for 11 hours to be here. So it's very good, Lily, you're back on your anniversary of baptism on a day that will celebrate that same thing a little bit later on. On Saturday uh, this week, we have the first of our concerts for this year, and the Bath Bark Choir uh, will make their first visit here, um, directed by Nigel Perrin. For anybody who is a King's Singers fan and remembers the originals, it's that Nigel Perrin making one of his last appearances as a director. Um, if you'd like to come to that concert, uh, tickets are available online or by phone and details in the parish newsletter. Next Sunday is Mothering Sunday and the day the clocks go forward. Uh, so a gentle reminder of both to avoid any embarrassment. Mother is mothering Sunday and the clocks have gone forward. Finally, I published the bands of marriage between Lindsay and Shakespeare and Matthew Christopher Nelms, both of the parish of St. Michael Bemerton. Also between Jenna Marie Ayres and Nathan Trevor Young, both of this parish. Also between Olivia Lillian Arnott and Robert Lee Maybury, both of this parish. If any of you knows a reason why these persons severally may not lawfully marry, you are to declare it. And these are all for the first time of asking. Lindsay, don't look so relieved. We knew you were okay. okay. <laughs> Let us stand to worship. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, give us insight to discern your will for us, to give up what harms us, and to seek the perfection we are promised in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please sit now for our first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord says this, Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which does not satisfy? 
Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that, me, that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will, he will abun abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first hymn is number 325, and you will see that there are verses and a refrain. At the beginning, the choir will sing the refrain, and then after each of the three verses they sing, we are invited to join in the refrain. So not the first time, but after every verse they sing, we'll echo that refrain. Let us stand to sing, number 325. <laughs>
a reading from St. Luke's Gospel. There were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We remain standing then to sing our canticle, which you'll find towards the back of the booklet, the Venite, Come Worship God Who Is Worthy of Honour. May my words and all our thoughts be now and always acceptable to God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen.
I wonder what you think of when you hear the word reunion, the coming together of family members, friends, or others we've once known but not seen for a while. Occasions, then, that sometimes fill us with eager anticipation and sometimes, perhaps, with an equal sense of dread. As many of you know, Stella and I returned last weekend to our old college and took stock of the vision of now greying, and in some cases definitely balding, ex-students, amongst whom we had once studied and socialised. And on one level, that reunion was unbelievably easy. On the Saturday morning, I rehearsed a small group of singers some of whom I hadn't worked with since 1986. And yet, within five minutes, it was obvious that somehow they'd all just slotted back into place. In the bar later that evening, my then assistant Simon said that for him too, it was just like travelling back 30-odd years. There we were, he said, standing round the same old piano with you, telling us all what to do. I think that was code for you were being a bit bossy, but I think maybe fair enough. What I had forgotten was quite how much energy there is in the room when you get a dining hall full of us. Lots of people with lots to say and not too much time to say it. And if anything, the volume of conversation has increased since our younger days, possibly because we're all just a little bit deafer as well. There were also two very different reunions this week between the British Iranians just released from captivity in Iran and their respective families. Businessman Anoushe Ashouri had been visiting his mother in Iran when, in 2017, he was arrested and later sentenced to 12 years in prison. Ten years for allegedly spying for Israel's National Intelligence Agency, Mossad, and two years for acquiring illegitimate wealth. We're possibly more familiar with Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe, she had also been visiting family in Iran with her not-quite-two-year-old daughter when she was detained in April 2016. She was accused of running an online journalism course aimed at recruiting and training people to spread propaganda against Iran. Both have consistently denied these accusations and it is generally accepted that their detentions and that of other jailed Iranian dual nationals is connected to diplomatic disputes between Iran and the UK. Richard Ratcliffe, Nazanin's husband, has always maintained that his wife was imprisoned as leverage for a debt owed by the UK over its failure to deliver tanks to Iran in 1979. Whatever the real reasons for these and other detentions, news of their release earlier this week made a very welcome change from everything else that's going on, and they are now safely home. Clearly, it's going to take some time for them and their families to adjust. And I was intrigued by something that Richard Ratcliffe said. Homecoming is a journey, not just an arrival. From the safety of home, those former detainees can finally begin to unpack the traumas they've been through. And in returning to that home, they can recognise more clearly what is precious and what is challenging about the new life they are now beginning. All of the above, Oxford and Iran, flooded into my mind when I read the passage we just heard from Isaiah 
with that phrase, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Because I think that snippet provides a useful comment on human relationships, as well as the way in which we encounter God. Surely one of the fundamental reasons why Anoushe Ashori and Nazarene Zaghari Ratcliffe and others have been detained in Iran is that our ways are not their ways. Our thoughts are not their thoughts. Suspicion between Iran and the West, an inability to engage with cultural differences, makes any meaningful dialogue that bit more difficult. And whenever we're faced with people who think and act differently from us, there's a danger that tribal instincts kick in and we become unsettled and fearful. Arguably, what we now see playing out in Ukraine is a fear of difference and a determination to impose a single culture and mindset on another people. Let me take you back, though, to the more cheerful surroundings of our Oxford reunion and the after-dinner speaker who took us back to our first experiences there of getting to know each other for the first time. He reminded us of the shock, after always being one of the clever ones at school, of discovering that there are lots of people at least as clever as us, and some people a whole lot cleverer. And realizing that as well as those people who seem to know everything about everything, there were plenty of others who knew oodles of stuff about things we'd never heard of, but had no idea about the things we were interested in. Our thoughts and ways were not theirs. And in some cases, their thoughts seemed alarmingly higher than our own. Faced with that peculiar mix then, one of three things could happen. Either we were cowed into a sense of insecurity, overwhelmed by the apparent brilliance of everyone else, or we became stubbornly convinced of our own importance and didn't rate what other people did, or we learnt to listen, to try to understand what made other people tick and how their knowledge, however peculiar it might seem at first, could deepen our own understanding. And unless we keep on trying to listen in that way, there is a danger that we just assume our ways are the better ones, and then we fail to learn from anyone we don't fully understand, so that our own thoughts are in fact stunted and undeveloped. And if we're not always good at relating to our fellow human beings, what hope is there for us before the face of God, whose ways and thoughts are unquestionably different and higher than ours? In the face of such perfect goodness, we may easily be cowed into a sense of insecurity, to despair at our own failings and our inability to understand. Nevertheless, Isaiah urges us to return to the Lord, for he will abundantly pardon. Precisely because God's thoughts are higher than ours, he is able to indulge us with generosity and understanding. Precisely because God's ways are higher than ours, we can aspire to be like him, knowing that when we fail, he will always be ready to pick us up and start us on our journey again. Religion is often cited as a cause of wars and division. And it is true that religious labels can be used to bolster the divisions that undoubtedly exist. But surely it could be argued that the more of us who do have religious faith 
and who recognize that God's thoughts are not ours, not just whatever I think or what my tribe thinks. The more of us who recognize and aspire to the perfection of God's ways, the more likely it is that we can begin to break down and see beyond the barriers that we are all so good at creating for ourselves and the fear and prejudice that result. Like those arriving for the first time at university, we can be inspired, not intimidated, by the vision of something greater than ourselves. Before the rich complexity of the human family, before the greatness of God, we are called to humility, but not despair, to aim for greatness and not to be afraid to fail sometimes. God, who created us all, knows our weaknesses and foibles and loves us for them. God, whose ways and thoughts will always be higher than ours, calls us home to be reunited with him. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The choir will now sing for us verses from Psalm 63. Let us stand then to affirm our faith, 
saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we sit now for our time of prayer. Lord, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are your ways higher than our ways, and your thoughts higher than our thoughts. We seek you while you may be found, we call you while you are near. Hear our prayers today as we call out to you about our world. Father, we pray for our shocked and traumatized brothers and sisters of Ukraine. We pray for help and hope for the bereaved and for those whose homes and lives have been wrenched from them. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for peace. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. We earnestly pray that all of the nations will be summoned and come running to you, Lord, that, and that you will have mercy upon us all. We pray that evil will be overcome and that peace will return to Ukraine. And Father, we pray to you for Vladimir Putin, that you will change his heart or remove his power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, in these worrying days, we give you heartfelt thanks for the compassion and kindness shown by so many. Thank you for the goodness in people's hearts who have been generous and offered practical help. We pray for your protection on both the vulnerable who need help and for those who have offered it, that you will keep all evil from them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, in this time of Lent and repentance, we pray that we will search our own hearts, that we will acknowledge our own shortcomings. Forgive us when we are greedy. Forgive us when we disregard others in favor of our own desires. Forgive us when we do not choose you and your ways of truth and peace. For unless we repent, we too will perish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, remember those who are calling out closer to home, those in anguish and sorrow, those who are sick. We pray for those who face fear, fear and uncertainty as we see rises in our cost of living. Father, if you have work for us to do in easing the burdens of our neighbors, we pray that you will speak to us, speak to our hearts, and equip us to demonstrate your love by serving others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you ask us to come to you when we are thirsty. <clears throat> you have all good things prepared for us. We pray that we are always able to acknowledge our own blessings from you, to see the good in the people around us. We look to you and give you thanks as we see hope and delight in the new life emerging around us, in the spring flowers and the warming of the earth. In a moment of quiet, we count our own many blessings and give you thanks.
Lord, in your mercy. And Father, we, <clears throat> we bring all of these prayers together in the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us stand now to sing our final hymn, number 629, 629. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.